Sunny by Jason Reynolds, Chapter 9. Saturday. Dear Diary, I don't have time to say much this morning because it's meat day, and I'm too nervous to write anything except for maybe I'm so nervous. Wish me luck. Also, I hope Daryl is okay. Today is the day my mother died. Dear Diary, by the time I got downstairs dressed in my defender's uniform, ready to go to the meet, Daryl had already made breakfast, pancakes and eggs, but I told him I can't eat, too nervous. Actually, first I thanked him, then I told him I can't eat because my stomach had been tied in knots all morning. Milky glue guts. So for the first time in forever, I turned down pancakes. Daryl said it was okay. Then he said, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Usually my birthday is spent with Aurelia taking me to a dance show or a concert. Always, always, always something experimental that involves face painting and neon lights. Which is cool, but I'm not sure how much of that screams, Happy Birthday, Sunny. But I always appreciate it. It's more than anyone else usually does. And by anyone else, I mean Daryl. Daryl normally just takes this day off, like off of everything. He usually just sits in his chair and be stone. Dear Diary, Diary, I don't want to bore you with all the stuff about the ride to the track, or even the track itself. It's always the same, a pretty quiet ride, quiet and cool, not quiet and weird. Through the city, past the big inflatable purple long-armed monster dancing outside everything sports, eventually leading us to a track packed with people. So many people. Family members and friends stacked up in the stands, ready to cheer on their favorite runners but I wasn't a runner no more. And as we turned into the parking lot, that fact slapped me in the face. For the first time in my life, I wasn't going to run. Daryl asked if I was ready for this. I told him I was. But the thing is, diary, I wasn't ready. And when I got out of the car and started walking towards the track, I started thinking of a way out of it all, a new plan. One, option one, approach the track, don't turn back. A. Warm up and stretch with everyone as if nothing is wrong. You have the whole meet to figure out how to get out of this, because the discus is going to be the last event. If all else fails, you just say it's your birthday and you'd rather throw a party than throw a discus, and that next week you'll be ready. B. Run the mile as if you totally forgot you weren't running it no more. C. Throw the discus and embarrass yourself. 2. Option 2. Don't approach the track. A. Cry. B. Poop on yourself. If crying doesn't work, you know, there's no coming back for this. C. Sunny. Sunny! Daryl was calling my name. I don't even, I didn't even know I'd stopped walking. Sheesh. I continued on, looking out at the field as I got closer to it in the track. The white lines like rings around a green planet. A planet I'm used to orbiting. But now I was supposed to be locked down. I was supposed to fling the tiny metal spaceship back into outer space. I wished it could take me with it. I took my place on the track just outside the, of everyone else. I mean, I was close to Patty, Lou, and Ghost, but not in the mix like I normally would be. Just a little bit away from everyone. I don't know why. Just felt different, I guess. Then Coach revved up and dropped his pep talk on us. He said we were there to defend four things. One, our reputation. Two, our work ethic. Three, our ability. And more importantly, especially this week since I was doing something new, we're defending for each other. Wit was standing next to him nodding. Coach crossed his arms and Wit put hers behind her back. Then Coach said, this, this is what it means to be a team, to be family. It means things change, but they keep moving. Coach probably didn't even know he was describing my new favorite movie. Then Coach sideswiped everyone and told Lou to lead the stretches. Not Aaron. Not Aaron. Not A-A-R-O-N. Lou! Dear Diary, Coach sees almost everything. And if he doesn't, Wit sees it. But for some reason, no one saw Aaron push Lou after the stretches. Not even Patty but I did, and I started walking over to Aaron to let him know that even though I was trying to play it cool, I have some noise for him. 
But before I can get to him, Coach called me over and told me he had some news. And having news is what people like Coach and Gramps say before they say someone or something has taken a turn. And things definitely took a turn. They rearranged the events because of this new field event. It's only three of you, so they've decided to put you all first. That's what Coach said. I felt like I was going to pass out. All my tick boom had turned into a sputter, and the glue feeling in my stomach had turned into something else, something heavier, like a discus, but only until the balloon showed up. It was Aurelia and Gramps. They were climbing up into the stands with like a hundred balloons. I just told Coach before he asked, today's my birthday. Coach said, today? I said, yeah. He asked, why didn't I tell the team? I shrugged. Coach told me to hurry up and speak to my family. We had work to do. I ran off the track and gave Gramps and Aurelia hugs, and they wished me happy birthday and asked if I was ready and all that. And I told them I was nervous, and it felt like all those balloons were in my body. And that's when Aurelia pulled out a green market or marker, grabbed me by the wrist, and drew a star on my forearm, where my mother's was. For good luck. When I got back to the benches, there were questions. Yo, Sonny, why didn't you tell us today was your birthday? Lou. How you surprise your team with your birthday? Patty. Anything else you want to tell us that we don't know? Ghost. Um, I don't go to school. Me. You don't go to school? Who are you? Ghost again. Be quiet, Ghost. Patty. I mean, I do want to know about this school thing, but right now we were talking about your birthday. So how come you didn't want us to know, Patty, again? We were passing the Tupperware of orange slices, the ones from Lou's mom, around. I told them that I just never really talk about it too much, because I don't do that much to celebrate or nothing, because it's also the day my mom died. And before they could make melty sad faces and do that awful aww thing, I told them it was fine. I was fine and showed them the green star on my arm. None of them understood it, plus it was hideous, but I knew. Dear Diary, the announcer made the announcement, because that's what announcers do, that the order of events had changed slightly and that there would be an add-on at the beginning of the meet, the discus. He announced who would be participating. And lastly, from the defenders, formerly the master of the mile, Sonny Lancaster. It was time. I walked out onto the track and across it onto the grass over to the throwing circle. Coach came behind me, a few discuses in his hand. Two other throwers and their coaches were there swinging their arms around trying to loosen up. They definitely looked a lot more relaxed than me. Then the referee told us the rules. If you go over the line or on the line, that's a foul. If you step out of the circle, that's a foul. If your discus goes outside the sector lines, which means if it hits the track, foul. We all nodded. And then the ref said that because my last name, Lancaster, was alphabetically before Watkins and Young, I was up first. Lucky, lucky Lancaster. Ugh. Coach waved me over to where he was, which was just a few feet behind me. He put the first discus in my hand. He told me, reminded me, that I had this. That I was, that it was just like dancing. Whoosh. He told me to just let it flow and let it go. I stepped into the circle. The sound of everyone watching was silence. I let the discus rest in my palm. Let just the tips of my fingers grip it, just like we practiced. I wound, 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 then spun, stepped, spun, stepped, throw. Foul. Stepped over the line, son. I tried to shake it off and just grabbed another discus, got back in position. Coach told me it was okay and to settle down, settle in. Coach bent his knees to demonstrate what he wanted me to do, just like we practiced. Invisible chair, sit in the invisible chair. Daryl popped up just like he did a week ago when I quit, but his face wasn't stone or wax, and I wouldn't have even known if he didn't scream out, let's go. Aurelia popped up next to him. Patty shouted, you got this, Sonny, you got this. And Lou and Ghost and even Aaron and Lynn and Curon and Wit and ease up, Sonny. Nice and easy. 
Again, I let the discus rest in my hand. Then when I was ready, I wound, wound, wound and whipped into my double spin again. This time getting the discus off clean, spiraling through the air, but hard to the right. Foul. The discus plinked onto the track, followed by the ooh of the crowd. Coach ran over to me. He said he could see it in my face. I had no idea what he was talking about. Coach explained that he could see sound in my face, in my body. He told me I needed to let it out. I needed to scream. Diary, remember what I said about choking when I had the biscuit stuck in my throat blocking all my vowels? That's how I felt again. Like I should knock everything over, but there was nothing to knock over. Like I was panicking. This was my last chance. My heart was kicking a hole in my chest. Boop, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. Boom, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. And as I tried to settle it, tried to quiet down, suddenly, sound. A rumble coming from the audience like a storm approaching. And I stared at the discus and at the star scribbled on my arm in green marker and wound. Boom, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. Boom, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. Everything is moving. Everything is changing. Everything is connected. And wound. I am not a murderer. I am not a hurricane. Nothing is wrong with me. Boom, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. Boom, bap, bap. Ba, boom, boom, bap. The sound tears me on the inside. I have to get on the outside. Baraka. I'm going to scream. Baraka. I'm going to scream it out in a way and spun, turned and turned and let go. 